Hey everybody, this is So Heidi with The Successful Fashion Designer and this tutorial is gonna show you how to create a repeating pattern swatch in Illustrator from a image of lace, okay? So we're gonna start out in Photoshop and what I've done is I've grabbed a lace swatch from the internet. You could grab something online that you find that's close to what you wanna mock up. If you have an actual swatch that you wanna mock up, you could scan it or take a picture of it and bring it into Photoshop. We'll first create the artwork in Photoshop, we'll get it kind of cleaned up and then we'll bring it into Illustrator to create the actual pattern. So what I wanna do is I wanna create one exact repeat of the artwork. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of find something that's identifiable in the artwork. I'm gonna work with this little flower in the upper left corner. Now you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have at least one repeat captured, otherwise your mock-up's gonna not look amazing. So with my crop tool, I'm gonna click and I'm gonna start in that little center of that flower. That way as I come over horizontally, I can see that I've cropped one horizontal repeat there. And then I'm gonna come down and I can see, now I've got the two corners of the flower down here at the bottom. So I try to find something really identifiable and use that to crop my repeat in Photoshop. Then once I have that done, I hit the enter return key and I've got my one repeat cropped. Now to make sure the edges of the repeat match up nicely, I'm gonna come up to filter, other, I'm gonna choose offset. Now what the offset filter does at first, let's just start with it at zero and zero. And we'll make sure our preview is turned on. But as I move the horizontal offset over, you'll notice what it does is it moves the entire image over to one side or the other. And that way you can see how the edges of the pattern seam up. And the seam is right about here, and this is looking really good at a quick glance. So now I'll change my vertical, and again, I can bump this value up, positive or down, negative, it really doesn't matter. But you'll notice the swatch moves down, and I can see how well that lines up. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK once I've done that. Now I can zoom in, and you can start to really see how the edges seamed up. Now we can fix some of these however you think is the best. Um, depending on your experience in Photoshop, one method may be better than the other. Typically what I do is I just come in with my clone tool and depending on the size of my artwork, I may change the size of that. I can change that using the up or down, uh, the, the right or left bracket on my keyboard very easily. And I can kind of come in here and I'll hold the option or alt key to uh, capture my selection point and then I can kind of just clone over. Now I'm gonna kind of zoom through this next part. I'm gonna finish the vertical and I'm gonna finish the horizontal. This can sometimes be a little bit of a tedious process depending on how big your swatch is, um, but just take the time to go through and I just sped up this portion of the video because you don't need to see every little piece that I am actually editing. All right, now once you have all of that done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the white portion out because we wanna have this be transparent within Illustrator. We wanna make sure that we can use this and use it on our illustration in a way that we would really see lace. There might be like a solid color behind it in our garment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna turn my background layer off so we don't even see that once we start working with this. I'm gonna come up to select color range, and I wanna make sure that white is what is selected. So I can tell by, if I click there, the black is selected. If I click there, the white selected. Now I know there's like a lot of little pixels, but I just wanna get the white selected. So there I can see the white is what's selected. Whatever selected will actually show up in white. So you kinda of have to bounce around a little bit depending on the size of your image. Now from here, we wanted to find our fuzziness. If we have less fuzzy, then it's hardly gonna select any of it. If we have more fuzzy, it's gonna select all of it. Depending on your image, this value is gonna change, okay? So we'll push it as hard as we think we need to until we get a, what looks like a good result. On this one, I think we need to push it pretty hard. I'm gonna go ahead and choose okay. And now if we zoom in, you can see it selected all of the white portions. It's also added like a nice soft feather on that selection so that when I hit the delete key and then I choose deselect, and I zoom in, you can see it deleted all the white and it left like really nice soft edges around this. It's not these hard blunt edges. So when I bring this into Illustrator and I put a solid color behind it, it's gonna look really nice and organic. So now we'll bring it into Illustrator and I'm just gonna do Command or Control A to select all, Command or Control C to copy and we'll jump into Illustrator. Now we're in Illustrator and we'll paste our lace swatch in Illustrator. So Command or Control V just to paste it in. Now just to show you that it is transparent, I'm gonna create a swatch here 
and we'll set it to the back, object arrange, send to back, and you can see that it is indeed transparent and we're getting the lace effect that we want. So let me delete that and let's first turn this into a pattern swatch. So I'm gonna come over to my swatches panel, I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna simply drag and drop this into my swatches panel. So now I'm gonna move this over here. I'm gonna turn this other layer, which I've got a bra on, so we can mock this up. So I'm gonna select the bra portion, which I'm gonna say, let's just say is pink, okay? And I wanna add the lace pattern on top of this. So I can do this a couple ways. And one way I see a lot of designers doing it is by creating, copying and pasting that exact object and adding another pattern fill on top of it. But there's a better, more efficient way to do this. I'm gonna come up to Window, Appearance, and in my appearance panel, I'm gonna click the uh, drop down menu right here. I'm gonna choose add new fill. What that's gonna do is it's gonna add a new fill color to this object. So I can have two fill colors in one object. The first fill color, which I want on the bottom is gonna be the pink. And the second fill color, which I want on the top is gonna be the lace pattern swatch that I just made. So I just click the drop down here, grab my lace, and now you can see it puts it on top of the pink. Now a couple things I can do. I can change the size of this because right now it's quite large. If I'm using this appearance panel to add multiple, multiple uh, fill colors to my artwork, when I have this selected, I wanna make sure that the fill color with the pattern swatch is selected. If I've got the pink swatch selected and I try to do this next trick, it's not gonna work. So make sure the pattern swatch is selected and come up to uh, object transform and we're gonna choose scale. And with our preview turned on, I do not want to transform objects and I do not want to transform strokes and effects. I want my stroke weight to stay the same. I only want to transform my patterns. So now I can put my cursor in the uh, box here and I can just hit the arrow key up or down to change the size of the pattern. Okay, so once I get it to a size that looks good for my specific design, I can go ahead and click OK. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to probably change the color of the rest of this to match. So this I have set up as a pattern brush. Um, we're not going to go through that in this tutorial, but I just made a simple pattern brush that sort of emulates the uh, line here with the stitching. That is, uh, I'm not a bra designer, so I don't know what that exactly is called. Perhaps it's the channel to put the, the uh, wire in. But from here, I select that and the stroke color is set to white. If I want it to match pink like the rest of my bra, I can do that. And perhaps I actually might want it to be black. That might look better for this design. Um, or we could leave it pink and we could say, you know what, the straps are gonna be black. So we'll change the straps to be black. And if I were gonna do that, I would change the stroke color to be a dark gray so I could actually see them. So there's our bra, it looks really great. Took just a few extra minutes to set the pattern swatch up in Photoshop. Again, you can do that with any lace that you have, whether you find it online or it's a lace that you actually have the swatch of and go ahead and mock it up to any of your garments and designs. Thanks so much for watching you guys. I am so Heidi with The Successful Fashion Designer. If you like what I'm doing, I would love to send you more content. Check out my website at SoHeidi.com. I send out tons of free tutorials and videos that you don't see here on YouTube, and I would love to get to know you a little bit better. See you soon, bye-bye.